you won't believe the child star given a death sentence. In this video, we'll look at 15 child actors who became awful criminals. Shia LaBeouf Shia LaBeouf hasn't exactly been a model citizen. In June 2014, he was arrested outside a New York theater and charged with criminal trespass, disorderly conduct, and harassment for drunkenly disrupting a performance of cabaret by yelling obscenities and even slapping the bottom of one of the cast. He later pled guilty to a disorderly conduct charge and began alcohol abuse treatment. In July 2017, he was arrested in Georgia at the ungodly hour of 4 a.m. for making a nuisance of himself in public after a woman refused to give him a cigarette. Live body cam footage of the arrest revealed that Shia had let his mouth run loose on the arresting officers, hurling offensive comments continuously at them. In October 2017, he pled guilty to a disorderly conduct charge that arose from his July 2017 arrest and was fined $1,000. He was directed to seek anger management and substance abuse therapy and given a year of probation. And then, in June 2020, Shia got in a fight with a fella and stole his hat and was some months later charged with petty theft and battery. The charges were later dropped on the completion of a court-ordered program. Topping everything detailed so far was the December 2020 suit filed by Shia's ex-girlfriend, alleging assault, sexual battery, and the infliction of emotional distress. She also said he knowingly gave her an STD. This lawsuit will be tried in April this year, and Netflix and industry personages have already begun distancing themselves from him. Be sure to stick to the end to see just how Orlando Brown ruined his career. If you thought that Shia LaBeouf story was crazy, wait till you hear this next one. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more amazing videos. Ryan Grantham Ryan Grantham is currently muddling his way through a life sentence after snagging a murder conviction. He had supporting roles in movies like Way of the Wicked, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, and Riverdale. Early last year, the Canadian entered a guilty plea on second-degree murder charges of killing his mother. The whole thing played out on March 31, 2021, with Grantham, who had been suicidal and homicidal for months, shooting his mom as she sat playing the piano in their family home. He then recorded a confessional video, covered the body, and headed out in a car the next day that was packed with guns, ammo, and firebombs. He planned on killing the Canadian Prime Minister, but later changed his mind and decided to commit mass murder at either a nearby university or a busy bridge. Ultimately, though, he meekly turned himself in. Grantham later explained that he killed his cancer-battling mom in order not to cause her any pain from hearing he had taken the life of the Prime Minister and or fulfilled his mass murdering fantasies. He has been assessed as suffering from serious mental health issues, which had been brought on by alcohol and marijuana abuse. Marcus T. Paul Marcus got his big break on Moesha, with the sitcom running from January 1996 to May 2001. This guy had supporting roles in Nothing to Lose, High School Musical 3, and Take the Lead. In February 2015, the former child star was arrested in Arizona and charged with DUI and possession of controlled substances, for which he ultimately got a year of probation. When arrested for driving erratically and too close to emergency vehicles, he reportedly stunk of alcohol, with a bag of weed being discovered in his pocket. In August 2013, he kicked his girlfriend during an argument. The couple had been out at a nightclub when Polk felt that his girl was not giving him the attention he deserved. An argument began when the two got home and grew hotter, with Polk getting physical and driving her out of the house. The girlfriend later went to the hospital with internal injuries, narrating to hospital staff and the cops what had transpired between her and Polk. He surrendered to law enforcement and spent a few days behind bars. Ultimately, a plea bargain deal was reached. He didn't have to do major jail time and only had to maintain a 100-yard distance from the woman he had assaulted and enroll in a 12-month duration domestic violence treatment program. Amanda Bynes In late September 2014, the ever-troubled child star was arrested for DUI and held on $15,000 bail. The arrest reportedly happened after Amanda stopped in the middle of an intersection for a traffic light. This was by no means her first DUI arrest, 
with Amanda Bynes infamously colliding with a Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department cruiser in 2012 while allegedly driving under the influence. The three-year probation that followed that particular offense began in February 2014. In 2013, she made the news for the umpteenth time after starting a fire in the driveway of a stranger and throwing a bong out of the window of her Manhattan building. The What a Girl Wants and She's the Man actress has had a very public battle with substance abuse and has announced a bipolar disorder diagnosis. Things with her got so bad that she had to be placed in a conservatorship from August 2013 until March 2022. Amanda has been missing from the big screen since 2010, but has lately been talking about making a comeback. Edward Furlong Remember Edward Furlong? At 13 years old, he starred in arguably the best action movie of all time, alongside a certain Arnold Schwarzenegger. The movie in question is not The Last Action Hero or Conan the Barbarian, but Terminator 2. Edward spent the 90s popping up in not very successful movies like Little Odessa and American History X. But from the beginning of this century, he kicked off a life of near daily partying and became addicted to drugs, with this making it almost impossible to get movie roles and have a functional life. He married in April 2006, but his wife filed for divorce in July 2009. In September 2009, she filed for a restraining order after he hit her while under the influence. The cops went to holla at him in 2010 for violating his restraining order, and he was given three years of probation. Between 2012 and 2013, he was arrested four times on battery charges after beating up his girlfriend and was given a 180-day jail sentence in March 2013. Edward Furlong has stayed out of trouble lately and is sober now. He also got some new teeth after the set he was born with proved incapable of standing up to prolonged meth use. Dina Plato Born to a teen mom, Dina Plato took to figure skating with an eye on the Olympics. But the big screen came calling and she started doing commercials before making the jump into the acting world. She's mostly remembered for playing the part of Kimberly Drummond in different strokes. Substance abuse issues plagued her all her life and her first overdose came at age 14. She married in 1984, separating in 1988, with her mom dying the same week of the separation. Dina then gave power of attorney to an accountant who subsequently took off with almost all of her money. And in 1990, she lost custody of her son. In February 1991, she used a pellet gun to rob a video store and was arrested 15 minutes later. The next year, she was arrested for forging a prescription and spent 30 days in the slammer for violating her parole. With the bulk of her money gone and film offers few and far between, Dina spent most of her adult life poor and unemployed. She had a long history of suicidal tendencies and intentionally overdosed in May 1999 during a visit to the parents of her fiancé. Lilo Brancato Heard of a Bronx tale? It is a coming-of-age drama that, while not a box office success, was very much lauded by critics. That movie was the first ever directed by Robert De Niro, and among the cast was a certain Lilo Brancato, who got paid $25,000 for his on-screen efforts. From all indications, he looked set to make it to the top, and it didn't hurt that he had an uncanny resemblance to Robert De Niro. But once fame and fortune came calling, Lilo couldn't resist the allure of drugs and alcohol. Soon enough, he was addicted to both heroin and coke. In June 2005, he was pulled over for having a broken taillight, with a search uncovering bags of heroin in his car. In December 2005, he was arrested for the murder of an off-duty cop, who had heard Lilo and a friend breaking into a house and went over to investigate what was happening. Lilo's friend who fired the shot that killed the cop and who happened to be the father of the girl he was dating was subsequently found guilty of first-degree murder and given life without parole. Though Lilo faced second-degree murder charges, a jury found him innocent of that charge. However, he was guilty of attempted burglary and a 10-year sentence was hung around his neck. While imprisoned, he suffered at least one drug overdose and was paroled in December 2013. Joey Kramer Flight of the Navigator was a science fiction adventure movie that made its way to theaters in 1986. It has long been regarded as a cult classic, 
and pioneered the use of varied audio and movie tech. Joey Kramer played the lead role in this movie, and it is what he is most remembered for, especially after he quit the acting scene in the late 90s. In 2008, he was arrested for carelessly storing a firearm, with being given three months of probation. That same year, he was convicted of having drugs he planned on selling and was given a six-month sentence. In 2011, he was fined for drinking in public, convicted of cashing forged checks, and jailed for 30 days for having a weapon while shouting threats. But Joey outdid himself in May 2016 when he was arrested for a bank robbery in British Columbia. Eventually, he pled guilty to the crime and was sentenced to two years in jail and two years of probation. Todd Bridges Here's another Different Strokes cast member, and he's also been in Roots, Little House on the Prairie, and Everybody Hates Chris. Just like Dina Plato, Todd Bridges started abusing drugs at an early age, and by his 20s was hooked on crack and meth. He also bought and sold the hard stuff so he could afford to feed his addiction. While Bridges had some run-ins with the law, those were kitty stuff when compared to his 1989 arrest for attempted murder. Yes, he was arrested and tried for trying to kill a drug dealer via lead poisoning. However, he insisted on his innocence and put Johnny Cochran in charge of his courtroom defense. The jury found him not guilty of all charges, having been persuaded by the testimony of a witness who said Todd Bridges hadn't been on the scene at the time of the murder. We would love to say that the whole courtroom drama shook Bridges up enough for him to focus walking the straight and narrow path. But that didn't exactly happen. In December 1992, he was arrested in California for having drugs and meth in his car, and later wrote in his memoir that as the arrest unfolded, he considered committing suicide. He quit using and dealing drugs the next year, and has been sober ever since. Drake Bell Drake is an actor and musician who made his acting debut at the tender age of five. In both 2010 and 2015, he was charged with driving under the influence. But that's nothing when compared to what we're about to relate next. In June 2021, he was arrested in Ohio for the attempted endangering of children and disseminating harmful things to juveniles. What this all amounted to is that he had formed a decidedly inappropriate relationship with a young girl. Bell had met the girl in question years before, when she was barely out of childhood, sent her some bad stuff on social media, and did sexual things with her, before persuading her to come to his December 2017 concert, where they engaged in sexual relations. He initially pled not guilty to the charges, and was asked to provide DNA samples, before later entering a guilty plea. In July 2021, the victim publicly accused Drake Bell of sexual assault, said he had begun grooming her when she was 12 and had sent her images when she was 15. Bell was eventually given two years of probation and 200 hours of community service. He later said he was unaware of the true age of the victim and that she had grown obsessed after he learned her true age and cut off contact with her. Brian Bonsall Brian Eric Bonsall is a rock musician, singer, guitarist, and child actor who's most known for being on NBC's Family Ties. This guy, who won a trio of Young Artist Awards, called it quits with acting in 1995 and set up a rock band called Late Bloomers. In 2007, he was arrested on charges of beating his girlfriend and was subsequently given two years of probation. And then in December 2009, Brian was arrested on third-degree assault charges after beating up his best friend with a broken stool. He subsequently pled guilty to third-degree assault and parole violation. Brian's last run-in with the law was in February 2010, when he was arrested for marijuana use in violation of his parole terms. In court, he told the judge that mental health issues and substance abuse were responsible for his difficulty in walking the straight and narrow path. This pretty tale moved the judge so much that Brian was given probation and substance abuse treatment, rather than being jailed for his previous probation violations. Skylar DeLeon Skylar is supposedly a child actor, but there has been no solid proof that she ever was in the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers as an uncredited extra. It seems that Kitty show seems to be the extent of her acting career. At age 20, she enlisted in the Marine Corps, but deserted within 15 days and was given a less than honorable discharge. 
She and her accomplices murdered a husband and wife while stealing their boat, with Skyler later saying that the objective of the theft and murders was to get money to embark on sex reassignment surgery. Initially, the cops could not find any solid leads, especially since Skylar DeLeon had forced the boat owners to sign over their vessel before deep-sixing them while alive. Eventually, an associate of Skylar confessed to the cops, with his confession kick-starting the trials of everyone involved in the gruesome murders. Skylar was found guilty on three first-degree murder charges and given a death sentence for killing the boat owners and another person. One other accomplice also got a death sentence, while Skyler's wife snagged two life sentences without parole. Jeremy Jackson A severe drug addiction and overconfidence in his abilities and career prospects made Jeremy Jackson quit Baywatch. Later on, he focused on expanding his artistic talents on talk show appearances and his singing career. In August 2015, he was arrested and soon released for a stabbing incident. The whole thing happened in L.A., with Jackson allegedly trying to steal a car and then stabbing the girlfriend of the car owner when she tried to stop him. He ran from the scene, taking refuge in a hotel, and was arrested and charged with making criminal threats and assault with a deadly weapon, which could have sent him away for seven years. In 2017, he pled guilty, was given a 270-day jail sentence plus five years of probation and was ordered to attend anger management classes and Alcoholic Anonymous meetings. Also in April 2015, Jeremy was arrested and charged with assault with a deadly weapon after stabbing a man so bad that 177 stitches were required to close him up. Asked to explain himself, he said he had done the stabbing as a self-defense measure, and that seemed so reasonable to the cops that they let him go. In August 2014, after an argument, he beat his significant other severely. The victim, however, chose not to press charges. Robert Blake Former child actor Robert Blake made it to this list due to the unsolved murder of his wife. In May 2001, Blake and his wife were having dinner at a California restaurant. As she sat in the car waiting for her hubby to pick up a gun he conveniently forgot at the restaurant, a person or persons unknown walked up to her and fired a bullet into her head. Robert Blake was arrested the next year and charged with murder, with two acquaintances of his coming forward to say he had tried to pay them to kill his wife. Blake was eventually tried and found not guilty, as there was zero evidence tying him to the murder weapon. After the trial, the children of the deceased filed suit against him for the wrongful death of their mother. A jury ordered him to pay them $30 million, with this payoff being later halved on appeal. He declared bankruptcy, owes a ton of federal and state taxes, and these days does his best to stay under the radar. Orlando Brown This former Disney star and major pain cast member has been in quite a bit of trouble and like many others on this list, has major substance abuse issues. In February 2016, he violently assaulted his girlfriend, apparently forgetting or uncaring of the fact that he was in the parking lot of a California police station. When the cops arrived at the scene, they found drugs on him and charged him with drug possession, domestic battery, and obstruction of justice. Released on bond, he failed to appear on his court date and was rearrested in March of that year during an altercation with his girlfriend and her mom. Taken to jail and released on bond, he again failed to show up on his court date, fleeing to Nevada, and in April 2016 was caught by bounty hunters. In June 2016, the taxi he was in was cited leaving a house of ill repute, and it was stopped with Brown being questioned. He proved uncooperative with a search finding meth on his person. The cops came for him again in September 2016 after he broke into a restaurant owned by a friend and tried to change the locks. Brown's last arrest was in December 2022, and he's being held in Ohio on a $25,000 bond. He got there on domestic violence charges after threatening his brother with a broken knife and hammer. Click here to see 10 child actors who ruined their careers. See you there.